Good morning. Well, it's morning for me. I realize I have no idea when you're watching this. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to work out day 65 practice, tree and tree frog. So in this repo, we're going to write a tree frog class that extends the frog class. So let's go take a look. There's a bunch of instructions here. That's all in the class called main, but we're coming down and here's a class called frog. It's our usual frog. And we're going to write a tree frog class. Um, and we can put it right here. It doesn't have to be after it. Um, so we're going to say class tree frog. Classes always start with a capital letter. Extends frog. Right, so this says we're going to build a hierarchy of classes, and tree frog is going to be under frog in the hierarchy. So let's go back up and see what I asked you to do. Um, a tree frog has one new data field, a string tree type. That's the name of the type of tree the frog lives in. So we're going to say right here, private string tree type. Why do we do private? Because um, you always do your variables here are private. Um, that's part of how Java maintains uh, discipline in terms of who can change what information. Oh boy, my phone's ringing. Hang on a sec. Yeah, I'm back. Um, uh, so there's that. We made the variable. And I said, don't write a constructor. We'll be dealing with that next week um, uh, or next class. Write two methods, public void set tree type. I can just grab this. Um, and the other one is public string get tree type. So this is a, a accessor and mutator method. Um, this one being a mutator method. This is going to set, we're going to say tree type equals tree. So this is, if you call this method, you can set this tree type variable. And then um, let's go ahead and do the other one, public string get tree type. And there's nothing in the parentheses there. And we're just here going to return tree type. Okay. So we've written the class. I'm going to say run. Um, Everything should be fine. Yeah, it is. So that was all of this. And then I said, then write the tests as requested below. So we're going to go right here, create a regular frog. Frog F1 equals new frog. Hop that frog 10 spaces. F1 dot hop 10. Create a tree frog. Tree frog F2 equals new tree frog. Hop that tree frog. Hop that frog 12 spaces. F2 dot hop 12. Now notice there is no hop method inside tree frog. That's because it inherits all the methods from uh, its parent, which is frog. So we're going to run this now. Nothing's going to display because we're not printing anything yet, but now it's, but I've proven that it works. Uh, print both frogs, say which one you are printing. And if you want to, you can see the sample below, system.out.println, regular frog plus F1. And I'm going to say tree frog and it's F2. So let's, let's run that, make sure. So the two string from the frog class gets invoked for, for a tree frog and it just prints like it was a regular frog. Um, and we'll learn next class how you can get the two string for a for tree frog to, to add what tree type, you know, that would be nice information, but we're not worrying about that today. So next print the tree type of the tree frog. And so we should actually get null for this because we haven't set it yet. Like there's no constructor. And this variable didn't get set by anybody when you created when you create a new tree frog. But I just I'm just wanting you to see that. System.out.println um, tree type. F2 dot get tree type. Type, I promise. 
So we're going to get null on this because it hasn't been set yet. There we go. And then set the tree type and print it again. So for the printing it again, I'm going to just put this here. And then for setting it, we're going to do F2. That's the frog that's a tree frog. We're going to do set tree type. And I'm going to say oak tree because it's short and sweet. And so now we should get the null. And then we should, after that, get oak. We're just using the method that we wrote, that we used both methods that we wrote in the child class. And now I want you to print both frog objects locations, saying what you're doing as you do it. Seeing my example, if you're not clear, system.out.println um, frog location plus f1.getLocation. I'm making us use all the methods. That's what that's what the motivation is here. I want you to see that you can do get location for a regular frog and for a tree frog, even though tree frog doesn't have a get location, but it's it's accessing the method from the parent, all the parent, um, uh, all the parent variables and methods are available for use. So um, we should get ten and twelve again but just the numbers this time without all the dots. Yep. And uh, try to use dot set tree type or dot get tree type with the regular frog object. So we're going to do that right here. F1 dot get tree type. I mean, you, you could put it in a print call. Or like just having this line here, we actually wouldn't do anything. System dot out dot print line. Um, I mean, in a way, it's a waste of my time to type out the print because this this line will not work because you can't use get tree type on a regular frog. Right up over here, it says cannot find symbol because uh, there is no get tree type in the frog class. And so a frog can't access the children things, just like if a child is born with the superpower of being able to turn invisible, it doesn't mean the parent all of a sudden has the power to become invisible. And I'm, yes, I'm referencing the Incredibles anyway. Um, okay. So then I said, remove that line and give me a comment here explaining why this is the case. So the comment, I removed it. So it'll run again in the comment. Uh, I'd say, we can't use get tree type or set tree type on a regular frog object because those methods only exist in the child class. Parent class does not have any new additions that code in the child class adds. That's just more information. I'm asking you to literally write me a note and I'm going to check that you did that. And that's that. Any questions? Whoops. This isn't live, so I can't answer them. Good luck.